Hi everybody, I'm Solomon, the Arkansas Diamond Miner, and I'm here at the Crater Diamond State Park, and today I'm going to show you what I do to find diamonds. It's not the only way, maybe not the best way, but this is what I've done, and I've found a few diamonds, so we'll go inside and get started. Today, we're going to try and find the right material to work and process to look for diamonds. So we're going to walk around a little bit, and I'll show you a little bit of what we look for. Um, I'm already out here in the mine, as you can see. That is the north end of the search field. That is the west direction. And this is the south direction. And this is basically all diamond bearing. So we just need to get out there and find the right stuff to process. So this is the diamond search field. This is the south end of the east drain and you can see that it's plowed into furrows. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll go and look through these furrows and find areas where water has concentrated some of the heavier gravels like this right here. And you're basically looking for alluvial deposits of gravel. You can scoop that up and that should be where some of the heavier materials have settled and within that will be diamonds. So I'm going to walk around and look for a lot of that material in one spot. You'll also see other places where the streams have run across several furrows and uh, created alluvial fans that are just a little bit bigger. It's been several weeks since we've had any rain, so it is going to be difficult to find a pretty good supply of gravel. But I've got a few places I can check. So this is the north area of the search field. It's kind of the bottom side of the north area. Give you an idea where we're at. There's the old mine shaft building. So one of the interesting things in this area is the stream that runs through and it will actually pile up quite a bit of gravel. It's the only drainage on this very top end. And what I'm looking for is where the gravel has been piled up in an alluvial fan. So a good example, this part of the alluvial fan has been pretty well cleaned up. Somebody's come in here and scooped a lot of this out, but there's still Quite a bit of gravel that's actually been piled up by the water. We've recently had uh, over a foot of rain about a month and a half ago and this gravel is still piled from that rain event. It created a lot of runoff. Okay so this is right about the middle of the search field and I think I have found some material that I'm going to work today. This is a little bit of an alluvial fan from this little drainage right here. You can see this is uh, some piled up gravel. There's not a lot of big rock in it, which I normally like to find stuff that's got some bigger rocks. But it is an alluvial fan and it is concentrated. So my tactic will be to gather this material that's already somewhat concentrated and then I will actually bring water closer to this area so that I don't have to carry material to the water because I can carry less water here instead of more material to the wash stations. Nearest wash station, that is the North Wash Pavilion. So we are kind of right in the middle of the search area. And that's the East Drain so, looks like this is where I'm going to set up camp today. Okay, so first order of business, once I have found the material that I want to run, I'll start setting up my uh, shade area, because it is blistering hot out here at times. And I will put buckets throughout the material that I plan to scoop up. And I always set up just as close as I can set up to my material. So there's my camp. 
Got a chair and a hose and some water buckets. So I'm going to scoop this material into these buckets and I'll have it close. And I will probably get water from the wash pavilion. So that's not too far to carry a few buckets of water. And then I can start wet sifting. I think we'll have good luck with this today. step once I've got material in my buckets, I'm going to sort the largest rocks out of it with a stainless steel classifier. This will give me roughly three quarter inch pieces and smaller and I sort it into the mineral tub. So this mineral tub will usually hold about six five gallon buckets of material once they've been through my large sifter. So that's what I'm going to do next. next step in the process is to take the screen set, which has a uh, one quarter inch mesh for the top and a much finer mesh for the bottom. And these screens are available for rent in the Diamond Discovery Center or you can purchase them locally here in Murfreesboro. There's a couple places that sell them. So I will take and shovel material into screen sets and I'll start wet sifting this. So I'll slowly put it down into the water and start working the material through the top screen. It's a little bit windy out here so there may be some wind noise on the camera. I will start working the material through the top screen. Everything that's smaller than one quarter inch will drop through and be caught in the bottom screen. The average size of a diamond is supposed to be about the size of a match head. So most of them will go through the top screen. The material I'm gathering doesn't have a lot of clay or anything like that. So what is left behind is usually just the larger stones and this is if you have a large diamond this is where you'll find it um, probably I would say close to two carats maybe larger will be in this um, I've never personally found one this big but uh, it's still definitely worth checking your material from your top screen And 
I'm left with all of the smaller material and silt that has fallen through will be caught in the bottom screens. So I can just start working this down. bottom screen, you're going to want to do some bouncing. That'll help the heavier minerals fall to the bottom and leaves the lighter stuff on the top. And then you're going to move all those heavier minerals to the center by using a side-to-side -side motion to move that material up into a kind of a mound through the middle of the screen. And you're going to bounce it back flat. Do that a couple of times and then change sides. heaviest minerals concentrated in the very center. So the next step, once you have material concentrated in your screen and work to a center, is to flip the screen so you can actually see the heavy material that's in the bottom. And what you're left with will be a pretty good center, kind of a bullseye of your heaviest minerals. So that was actually on the very bottom and by working the side to side motion two directions you move all of those to one central spot and that is what I will scoop out and take home. If you have a diamond that's where it'll be, somewhere in that bullseye. over you've got your heaviest material right in the center um, this is what you'll scoop out and take home and I always go a little bit outside because uh, I wouldn't say that my forum is perfect in making a good center so I want to make sure that if there is a diamond that didn't quite make it to the center that I don't leave it behind so scoop that start all over. Okay, so one of the things I need to show you is uh, there's a kind of a certain way that you need to flip your screen. We've made another center and as you can see I've washed a little bit of material and um, working on a about a half of a five gallon bucket full of centers that I've been scooping out. But uh, I wanted to show you a little bit more in depth how I actually flip this screen over because it's actually kind of important. So I've centered this up in my water, and I've actually drained most of the water out of it. You want to get it pretty well drained. And what I'll do is you want to do it all in one motion and try not to have any bounce. And you want it to hit a flat surface that's pretty well packed down. So this is the end result once I have flipped my screen and you can see I've got a little bit better of a center right there. I've got a lot more heavies than what I started with. My material is getting a little bit better. I was a little bit disappointed in it at first, the first couple screens I did, 
did not have many centers. I think you can actually see a nail in that one, so you kind of want to be careful. There are nails in some glass out here. So if you're only here for, say, a day and you're wet sifting, you'll want to let this dry so everything else can dry off and it'll become dull, but a diamond will still be shiny even when it dries. And they'll be a lot easier to spot once this center has dried off. So this has dried off a little bit, and I don't see anything immediately that I would think is a diamond. Of course, the diamond could actually be underneath some of this stuff. So I always, always, always take a good scoop out of it, take all of my center, and that goes home with me and gets searched again. I just try and make sure that I've got everything that looks heavy. Sometimes I have to dig a little deeper if I say anything. That's almost back up to the top of the original screen. But that's okay, you can carry out a five gallon bucket and for one person, that's a lot of work in one day, so I don't worry about taking too much material. I'll flatten my pile back out. Pack it down just a little bit. It's time for the next screen. Okay, so it's about the end of the day, and we have uh, about finished it up here. Um, did not quite get a five gallon bucket full of concentrated centers, but what I did was when I started running out of time and I still had more material to run, I just didn't concentrate it. I washed the gravel and put it right into the bucket because the rule says one five gallon bucket per person per day of washed gravel can leave with you from the mine. So I'm not so worried about concentrating it. Um, my main focus when I come out here is to find already concentrated gravels in, you know, basically by alluvial fans or anything in the furrows where it's been concentrated by rain, washing, uh, you know, all the silt away and leaving gravel behind in each one of these little furrows. Uh, however I can find gravel that's already concentrated, that's what I like to use to run my material and I concentrate that even further and my goal is to get through as much of that in one day as possible. So, um, and in the last five trips I've made out here, I've found three diamonds and I still have some gravel at home to go through and of course now I'll have this bucket to go through. Um, I'll take them home, uh, get under some good light, get it dried. Uh, and it actually is, is better if you can actually dry it and go through it outside because, of course, the sunlight makes them, uh, it just seems like they're a lot shinier in sunlight versus uh, light, you know, from any kind of light bulb or anything like that. So this bucket's going to go home with me. Um, at some point, I'll be posting a video of, of uh, making a sorting tray that uh, you can use to kind of help you see uh, anything that's got more shine than the rest of the stuff around it um, and uh, so yeah I've got some cleanup to do and then uh, I'll be outside the park. <laughs>